Man, that's good stuff. Now, for context, are you saying, I know the answer, but they might not. Are you saying that, man, we should just leave our job and, and, and go for it? Absolutely not. <laughs> I think that people should have wisdom with it. Because when I got another job, even after I got into e-commerce and started making money for my courses, um, I worked that for the next four years, even at the height of the success of my business, because I wanted to make sure that income was going to be consistent. Most importantly, I wanted to make sure I had a good nest egg to cover me for at least a year or more. And I wanted to make sure that my expenses were enough to where if I, if worst case scenario, I had to go back and I had to make the lower end of what my job makes, that my lifestyle and my, my expenses would be able to be covered. Once I was able to answer that, in addition to healthcare, making sure my retirement um, investments are still being made at the frequency it was at my other job, then it was time to make the plan on how much consistency do I need with this new income and what that number is in order to make that jump. So you want to have wisdom. You don't want to just jump the ship. I think by year three, I was in a position, but I didn't leave until year five. So you got to have wisdom with that. And there's nothing wrong with having a nest egg. And I tell everybody all the time, what's better than one source of income? Two. And so you can continue to do that until you feel it's time to move forward and you want more of your time back. So it's a calculated risk. It's, it's measured. It's, it's, it's conversation because you're married. And um, you, you, you talked about doing things like saving, investing, reducing expenses while simultaneously building up additional streams of income. So uh, what were the conversations like with your wife during this time as you all are strategizing, right? Because there's probably one spouse at a time listening to this. One spouse is listening. They may text it to their to their spouse so that they can listen to it. So for spouse A that's listening and they're like, oh, we got to do this. How would you encourage them to approach the conversation uh, uh, that will cause the paradigm shift, not just for themselves, but for their spouse? So what I would say for me is both of you need to sit down and write down, what are your goals? Like, what, what do you want? Because it can't be one sided. My wife is not an entrepreneur, right? But she supports one and she's a very good supporter of one. My wife's uh, goal is always to be in the medical field and to the higher end of nursing. And so when we sat down, we went over what her goals were, what my goals were. And one of her biggest things is she wanted to go and complete nursing school, right? My biggest thing is I wanted to be in full-time entrepreneurship. So we looked at our expenses, we looked at what our costs are, and we said, okay, here's what our number needs to be to do that. What we had was that we had an opportunity to send my wife to nursing school for a two-year program that's normally four, and we found out what the cost was. So I said, okay, Instead of just leaving my job now, let me go ahead and take care of this out of pocket so she could pursue her dream. And then when we get to the, the point to where she's about to graduate and there's at least a year's worth of expenses, I can pursue mine. We paid everything out of pocket a year ahead of time for hers. And she was able to get like some some other like grants that she was awarded. And I was able to actually move that timeline up a year. And so I was able to go into it a year, but knowing that she was covered, our expenses were covered if I didn't make $1 for a whole two year, well, 18 months. But I knew at the end of like the next eight months, she was going to be finished and her income could totally cover everything we had. And we wouldn't have to exhaust all of our, our savings. If I didn't make $1 between now and when she graduated and most importantly, 18 months of running out of resources. So once we had that plan in place, I was able to comfortably do it without all the anxiety. We went and we quoted insurance to cover what we needed for what we see the doctors for, uh, dentist appointments, all that stuff. We got a little one. So we made sure that everything that we needed to keep our lifestyle intact to where we didn't have to, okay, wait a minute, we can't do this, we can't do that. We made sure that that was intact for a long period of time, even beyond the time that we would be coming into new income based on her graduation date. And that's what really changed everything. So dope. So dope. Thank you for unpacking that for us. So let's talk about these here courses, man. Why? Why is creating a course a good idea to produce an additional income stream? So the one of the reasons that there's several, you know, one is passive income, because when you create a course once outside of if some information changes, you can always just add another video and, and keep it going. 
The second thing is the impact. Think of all the people that reach out when they hear you do real estate or they hear that you do stock investing or they hear you do anything outside of the norm that say, will you mentor me? Will you teach me? Will you show me? That's just people that we know. And think about for my, my mentor tells me this for every one person that you help, there's 10,000 other people that you potentially impact. So if there's 10 people that you know personally that want information from you or that you feel you could impact in your life, there's at least a hundred, another hundred thousand that's willing to do that. The main thing of why I believe courses are so good is because it allows you to share your knowledge. It allows you to give impact and transformational information to people to allow them to change their lives. And literally it allows you to do something you're passionate about. Most of the stuff that we know, or at least some of the stuff that we know that we could monetize in a course are things that we're passionate about. Maybe we're not passionate about going into the call center and taking calls every day, but we're passionate about taking our disposable income and putting it into uh, index funds. Maybe we're not passionate about the engineering job that we have, but we're passionate about the real estate that we're able to purchase from the disposable income. So if I'm able to take what I'm passionate about, package that up and teach that to people that have the same interest or passion, but not know where to start and make money from it. Now I can actually turn that passion into a full-time income that allow me to live a full-time passionate life instead of a part-time one. Because a lot of us, we've got eight hours, eight to 10 hours that we work in a job. And if you're in nursing, it's 12. So literally a third to half of your day is gone. So anything you're passionate about, you're only going to be able to give it part-time availability because you still got to sleep. You still got to be a parent, a husband, a father, a mother, you know, whatever those things are as well. But when you're able to take that passion and monetize it to where you can grow that into a full time income, now you can build a full time passionate life, which is what we all want to live. And literally, we're in a position where you could do that and you don't have to exhaust your life savings like we used to have to do back in the day if you wanted to start a business to be able to do it. Mm -hmm.